Hello and welcome, BomberFD here. We have just defeated Oryx on hard mode. So I decided to make a video right away to help you guys out if you need help on Oryx. As far as all the mechanics on all the boss encounters so far, there hasn't really been that much of a change. Oryx is probably the hardest one to overcome. This fight really does come down to a total gear check. All the adds that spawn in this encounter are level 42. And before I get into any more, if you guys don't understand the basic mechanics on normal Oryx, make sure to go check out my video as well, which you can find in the description box down below. Now your light level is going to be a big deal. I went from 209 to 210, and each shot from my pulse rifle went up almost 100 damage each, which honestly is actually quite a bit of damage. So a little brief review, we have one guardian assigned to each one platform. We have another Guardian, which is most likely your lowest light level Guardian, going to be the Runner. And for the last Guardian, they are going to be in charge of taking down the Ogres. This Guardian needs to be the highest light level as it's probably one of the biggest responsibilities of killing the Ogres. Whoever has the Relic above their platform, they are also helping out with killing the Ogres. Now, for the additional mechanic that was used. Every time you kill an Ogre, a Knight spawns. That Knight is just a normal Knight but it also does the same mechanic as the Vessel Knight, which goes around and removes the grenades or bombs that the ogres spawn when they get killed. Now it took us a while to figure out how the knights spawn and where they spawn from. We finally figured out that a knight spawns opposite of where an ogre is killed. So for example, what you saw, we first killed the original ogre on the L2 side, which is that far left side where orcs hit. After we kill the ogre at L2, it then spawns a knight over on the R2 side. This is where the Taken spawn just a little bit by the platform. And I'll cover the knights again when we get back to that phase. I will say one of the biggest things that helped in this was mitigating the Taken. Especially the eyes that spawn. They completely crush you. As everyone is running to their designated platform grenade, I am going ahead and taking care of the Taken just so that they can at least be in safe cover and not get killed while they're trying to detonate their bombs. Now, for the running phase, there is a lot less grace as far as Oryx explosions. If you get hit by one, you most likely will die unless you have high enough armor. And we did a very simple designation as far as where we ran. Every Guardian went to their specific platform, and as for the Runner and the Ogre Killer, we each got on our own platforms up top by where the Daughters spawn. You can easily run around the rim of this and not get hit. If you are running down below with the lower platforms and you are designated to that platform, make sure you stay as tight as you can to that platform because the knight will hit you as well as throw a fire out. It's still the same exact fight. All it takes is 16 grenades or bombs to go off for orcs to be killed and do his last hurrah. So once we're all done, we're going to see where he's going and we're going to go ahead and point out where the knights are spawning as we kill the ogres. Another huge thing I forgot to mention is that we use weapons of light in the center to help kill the ogres. This not only gave us a huge buff to our damage, but also gave us a place of protection, especially when getting off the platforms. So knowing Oryx is hitting on L1, we know the ogre is going to spawn near that platform first. Once we kill this ogre on L1, a knight will spawn on R1. Once we turn around and kill the ogre on R1, a knight will then spawn on L1. So the ogres and knights spawning are at least bound to the one side, either on the L1-R1 side or the R2-L2 side. And again, as we kill this ogre on R2, a knight is spawning on L2. Same for when we kill the ogre on L2, a knight is spawning on R2. Now what you will find when you get behind on damaging enemies and you're not killing them fast enough, it is a huge snowball effect. Adds will begin to pile up, eyes will begin to spawn, and phalanxes will keep throwing their purple balls which will explode everywhere. This is why it's a gear check. This is why you need to get the ogres down ASAP. And the way that we killed the knights was to designate a person on each platform. If their knight spawned near their platform, they were killing their knight and not focusing on the ogre. The only knight that excludes this is the last knight that spawns. You can easily come back and get in the cover of the bubble and go ahead and take out the knight from a distance. It also took a lot more damage to make him stagger when shooting him in the chest. And for this, I would highly recommend that your runner have a touch of malice. It is night and day the fact that they are the one that have the brand, the bubble, the entire time that they can easily just spam their touch of malice the whole time without taking any penalty. Now for the teleporting phase, there is nothing new to see here. It's exactly the same, so we split it up in the groups of three on each distinct side. That way we're able to kill the Thrall as soon as they spawn and they don't wander in. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the second teleporting phase here. 
I'm gonna also increase the speed, that way I just can get through this a little bit quicker and also show you guys some helpful tips. Now when you get spawned in, it really does help to have a weapons alight, but also to call out when orcs is charging in. A lot of times in what I see in a lot of different raids is I see people running away from orcs, when really the best thing you can do is charge orcs and jump over him. By charging and jumping over him, you're going to trigger his sword slam, that way he's also not slamming right in the middle where someone could just spawn in and die. At any moment, if someone does go down, it is a huge damage loss. It's still probably doable, but the fact that our light level is right around 210, 208, 207, that's almost impossible. Now, once we get up to 220 light level, it will be a heck of a lot easier. And as you can see my gun setup, I like the Raid Pulse Rifle with my Black Spindle since I'm on Ogre Duty, and I love having a sword. That way, I can go ahead and take care of any Vessel Knights that come towards me. So here's the last stagger as well. I want you to see how someone runs up there with a Golden Gun. You can do a lot more damage just by getting up closer. Also, I want to point out here that not all the bombs go off. And in fact, someone doesn't get their bomb until the last second, but they sacrifice themselves because they saw the importance that we only needed four more grenades. So they sacrificed their own life knowing that they wouldn't make it back just to make sure that they got their grenade off. That is incredible awareness. Sure, they messed up and not getting to their bomb in the first place, but they knew that they needed to set it off for orcs to take damage. When that is staggered damage on those grenades when they don't go off at the same time, make sure you keep damaging his chest because it will keep his animation going and let that last grenade hit. If you guys have any other helpful tips or advice, please do comment down below as I would really like to help anyone that is trying to do this encounter. All in all, the added mechanics in hard mode really made it enjoyable. It was a bit of a challenge at times, but we successfully made it through. If you guys would like to see guides and videos of the other encounters, please do comment down below. The other encounters almost stayed exactly the same, and so I don't know if it's necessarily worth going and making an entire guide for it. But if there's a lot of people out there who would like it, I would definitely make one. And that is all I have for you guys today. If you guys did enjoy it and you found it helpful, please do thumbs up, and as well as subscribe for more content if you haven't already. And guys, as always, before I go, do know that you are loved.